recognize the gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Brooks, for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to commend President Trump on his decision to withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. For emphasis, the Paris Climate Accord is not now and never has been an agreement that binds the United States of America because it was never ratified by Congress. More specifically, the Paris Climate Accord, a treaty, was never ratified by the Senate pursuant to Article 2, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. Rather, in yet another example of disdain for America's constitutional republic, the Obama administration refused to seek Senate approval of the treaty. By declining to move forward on a poorly negotiated bad deal, President Trump kept his promise to the American people to put America first. Lest there be any doubt, the Paris Climate Accord intentionally hurt America to the benefit of competitor nations. In a global redistribution of the wealth scheme, the Paris Climate Accord called for America to give away tens of billions of dollars to other countries. That's tens of billions of additional taxpayer dollars on top of America's existing foreign aid giveaways. That's money America does not have, has to borrow to get, and cannot afford to pay back. That's nuts. America must stop borrowing money to send overseas to help other countries take jobs from Americans. Is that really so hard for the left to understand? The Paris Climate Accord undermined America's economy by putting American employers at a competitive disadvantage. By way of but one example, a comprehensive new study prepared by NARA Economic Consulting estimates that the Paris Climate Accord could cost the American economy $3 trillion in gross domestic product and 6.5 million industrial sector jobs over the next two decades. President Trump is right. America must lead by putting America's national interests first. The Paris Climate Accord failed to do that. By way of example, under the Paris Climate Accord, China and India, two of the biggest and worst polluters on Earth, have no new air pollution control obligations until 2030 at the earliest. Contrast the abysmal environmental record of China and India with that of America. And let's be clear, without a Paris Climate Accord, America's carbon dioxide emissions have been and are being reduced. For example, between the years 2000 and 2014, the United States reduced its carbon dioxide emissions by more than 18 percent. Further, over the past 50 years, America has been the world's environmental leader. No country on Earth has done more to reduce pollution by cleaning our air, cleaning our water, and properly disposing of hazardous waste. That 50-year record is compelling evidence that America's focus on being good environmental stewards will continue with or without the Paris Climate Accord. That's world leadership. And I know of nothing that says we're going to stop being the world's environmental leader. That 50-year record is also compelling evidence that America can and will lead on our own without hamstringing ourselves with a badly negotiated, one-sided Paris Climate Accord that reduces America's wealth while costing struggling American families their jobs. In summary, I am proud that President Trump puts America first. America should not and must not yield even a smidgen of our national sovereignty to the dictates of other lesser nations. Despite liberal climate scare and socialist Democrat hysteria to the contrary, America has been and is, by almost every standard, the greatest nation in world history. With an America first attitude, America will continue its 75 year streak as the greatest nation in the history of the world, second to none. Mr. Speaker, I yield back.